Hi, I'm Jamie Severiano with Innovational Musings, and we're here speaking with Scott Belcher, the president of the Intelligent Transportation Society of America. How are you doing today, Scott? Great. Good. So I'm just going to go over some questions and just get your feel on uh, the ITS. Okay. So who are the members of the um, Intelligent Transportation Society of America? Well, ITS America's got about 400 members, um, and they're divided between public and private sector. So on the public side, we've got state DOTs, state transit organizations, metropolitan planning organizations, universities, and environmental organizations. On um, the private side, we've got all of the folks who are developing and deploying um, technology that helps address transportation problems. So uh, folks from the automobile manufacturers to the telematics manufacturers to tolling providers and traffic light providers, and then the engineers who put it together and operate it. Where are the main offices and chapters of the ITSA? ITS America's m main office is in Washington, D.C. Um, we've got about 30 people who work there. And then we have state chapters um, in 40 states okay. around the country. And how is ITSA funded? Well, we're funded um, from three sources. Um, we have meetings. We have a, a major uh, World Congress every three years and then an annual meeting um, every year. This, this year's annual meeting will be in Houston. Um, and we'll focus, uh, Sam Palmazano, the chairman of IBM, will be our keynote speaker there. Um, and then, um, so that's about a third of our revenue. Another third comes from membership dues. And then the final third comes from some work we do uh, under contracts. What have been, in your opinion, the top three accomplishments of the ITSA so far? Well, I think we've advanced the, the dialogue around uh, transportation technology. Um, and, and gained a whole new level of credibility in Washington. And that, that's been really important because uh, at, at the, more we need, the more we push technology, um, the more we've got to educate the population and the public about it. Um, we have a real challenge in Washington with transportation. It's not a, a sufficiently high priority. And so, um, so through our education on the Hill, we've really, I think, moved the ball forward there. Um, the other, the, probably the second highest priority that we've got right now and, and success story is our leadership and sustainability. Technology can really make a difference um, in driving down climate change emissions and other emissions. And so using technology to uh, level out traffic, to drive down vehicle miles traveled by, by switching modes from automobiles to, to transit where it makes sense. Um, those things can really make a difference and really help the United States reduce its carbon footprint. Um, um, that's two. And then the third is, um, would probably be our last annual meeting um, in, where we were able to bring Secretary LaHood, his modal administrators, uh, Congressman Blumenauer, Governor Rendell, a whole lot of people to talk about transportation, livability, and, and technology. We had Anish Chopra, the Chief Technology Officer of the, White House, of, the, of the United States there. And it was really an exciting dialogue and a different dialogue than you normally have at a transportation conference. Great. Um, so international ITS, how is the U.S. doing versus uh, Europe? Well, um, we're, a recent study came out just uh, last week um, by an independent think tank that concluded that the United States is falling further and further behind. Mm -hmm. um, that Asia and Europe are um, further along than we are. Um, to some extent that's true. Um, in, um, in Japan, in South Korea, in China, they are doing things um, at levels that we haven't done it. They're investing a greater amount of um, governmental resources and, and it made this a priority to keep their, their uh, transportation systems operating and to, and to keep them competitive. Um, we've had a difficult time doing that in the United States. And as a result, the progress that we make has been done um, at the state level. It's been done uh, by private companies. But we haven't been able to get the systemic development that we need here. For example, in China, they have, I mean, in, in Japan, they have, um, they have a, a, a program called VIX. Uh, and that now it's called SmartWay, in which they have a nationwide real-time traveler information system. And that's, that's huge. Mm -hmm. um, that's driving down accidents and it's driving down congestion. Um, in, in London and in Sweden and in Singapore, they have area pricing, which means that you pay to go into a congested area, which drives down the number of people there and congestion. 
Um, we tried that in New York and it, and it got voted down. So um, we have our own unique set of problems though with 50 states and 50 different deployments. We need to, to come to a place where, um, where we're investing the right, the right amount of money and doing it in a comprehensive way and in a, and in a way that, that um, thinks through it in a long-term basis. And one of the things you mentioned in the talk you just gave is that even though people hear about a lot of money being put into infrastructure and, and uh, rebuilding bridges and roads and things, you're saying actually that we're, we're dramatically underfunded. Yes. And you, you made a, a statement that the highway system in America is broke and broken? Yes. So we, um, what's the difference between the perception I think a lot of the public has and reality? Well, I, I think, it, so there have been three independent uh, bi, bipartisan commissions that have come out in the last um, two years that have concluded that we've underinvested in our transportation system over the past 20 years. Um, and we've underinvested to the tune of between 150 and 200 billion dollars a year in additional funding. That's what, they, that's what these commissions would estimate it would take us to get our system back to an operational level, a functional level. Um, I, I think the difference is, one, um, we've, in, a, in our major urban areas, we've come to accept congestion as part of life. Uh, two, um, the states have done, a, have done a pretty good job with the limited amount of resources they have at keeping the system together. But the bridge collapse in, in Minneapolis should be a huge wake-up call to the population um, that we're not investing the way that we should. Um, so I think that's the, that's the real difference. I think that part of what ITS America is about, and I think you're seeing it with other, um, other advocacy organizations around, around the country, is we need to, to bring the debate and the discussion to the public level, outside of the transportation professional arena, but to um, but to my kids, to my siblings, to my, um, to my friends, and have them demand better of their congressmen and, and of their leadership. Bringing it back down to national level, uh, what states are leading right now in, in ITS? Well, uh, um, I'm here in, um, in Oregon today. We gave an award to the City of Portland and the Climate Trust um, for a project that they've done to synchronize 17 um, major arterials in the city, and, and the result of that over a six-year period has been they've been able to retire 157,000 cubic tons of CO2 emissions. That's huge. That puts Oregon as a leader. The second thing that Oregon's done that makes it unique is, well, not unique, but makes it a leader is the collaboration among the various government entities. Mm -hmm. There's not um, the, the bickering or the, or the territorialism there is in different parts of the countries. And because of that, um, they've been able to create what's called the portal, where they're putting, making publicly available uh, transportation information from a number of different sources, all in one location. And, and so private companies, public companies, research organizations can take that data and utilize it and create new opportunities. And then the final thing that they've done um, is, to, is to work together to build a fiber optic network um, around the city that typically would be multiple networks. This is one network that they've all collaborated on. So I think, I think Oregon is one of the leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, California is clearly a leader. Michigan is a leader. Virginia, um, Texas, uh, Florida, those are some of the leaders who are really doing, in Minnesota are, are really the places that, that I think of in New York. Mm -hmm. Those are really the leaders.